looking in with Jason Bray of Rugby Lovers Guide to Asia, uh, expert of Super Rugby Pacific, National Rugby League, an over fan of the Broncos who, you know, happened to have lost. Not just now, but in the championships last year. All right, yeah, yeah, move on, move on, move on. <laughs> what did I tell you about that grand final loss? It's Voldemort. We don't speak of it. We don't speak of last year's grand final in the NRL. It is Voldemort. <laughs> Voldemort. <laughs> the game which shall not be named. <laughs> so, look, we're looking to try and see what, what's going to happen this week. So, obviously, I want to kind of go back off of uh, what happened last week. Uh, let's take away the Las Vegas. I talked a little bit about that la uh, last week, but the rest of the games uh, for NRL, this is where obviously I am completely out of my wing on this one. Yeah. Uh, you had Knights Raiders, uh, Raiders winning 28-12, Warriors Sharks, Sharks winning 16-12, Storm Panthers, Panthers losing 8-0 to the Storm, yeah, Eels, yeah. Uh, Eels uh, Bulldogs, 26-8 uh, win, you know, uh, I, I always am always interested with Pimieta, Payamata eels. Yeah, yeah. Par uh, the par the Parramatta eels. Just call them eels. There we go. Just call uh, them eels. The yeah, hey, look, you know, I, I I take it for what it is. It's the name. It's just an it, it catches the <laughs> eye, it catches the ear. You know, uh, dragons uh lo want, beat the Titans twenty eight four. Cowboys forty three eighteen. Outside of what we saw from Vegas, what game actually stuck out the most to you? Yeah, in terms of their performance. Well, I mean, there's there's quite a few games there. Lots of upsets in the first round. I wouldn't be surprised if there are, there are tipsters out there who probably would have got two or three out of eight. There are a lot of uh, a lot of upsets. I don't think anyone saw the Dragons. I picked the Dragons as the the wooden spoons. I didn't think they were going to flog the Titans at home. Um, that. The Panthers and Storm, that was always going to be a, a, a really tight game. Right. They're, they've developed a real rivalry. The Storms, you know, they're right up there every year. They've been great now for 10 years. Um, that's not a huge upset. I guess the zero, the big donut that the Panthers didn't even score was was something of a surprise. Um, doggies have struggled, so the Eels beating them. I guess the two games... The one game that kind of shocked me was the Warriors Sharkies, right? So the Warriors are the New Zealand Warriors. They're doing really well um, on the field recent times, or definitely off the field. They're they're packing that stadium out over there in Auckland, getting big numbers, and they and they're getting and they got a lot. Their fan base is really energised over the last couple of years. They're playing a wonderful brand of rugby, and in this game versus the Sharkies, who are again they're a top eight playoff team continually, but not really pushing into the big one. Um, Warriors were up twelve. That twelve points they scored there came in the first twenty minutes, and they and they were just riding high on this big crowd. And um, they looked like they were just going to steamroll the Sharkies. They had all the ball, all the possession, and then the Sharkies won. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and all they did was just grind. They just slowed the Warriors. It almost they did it in slow motion. They just kind of snuck up on them, and before you know it, the Sharkies are up sixteen points to twelve. And the Warriors don't put any more points on. It, that was a real shock. Um, the Sharkies are a good side. They've got one of the best players in the league in Nico Hines. So it's not a complete upset. But in the context of that game, yeah, it was like, it's oh, wild. again, it was like two after 20 minutes, it's going to be the Warriors by how many? Then the Sharkies had them. So that, yeah. was, the, that was a bit of a shock. I was going to say, you know, from watching watching the, the Vegas one, you know, it, it really feels like, especially on the back end in the second half, whenever you really start to feel the wear down from probably the third to fifth uh, um, yeah. attempt for the try, especially in the second half of, of, of the game, that's whenever it's really the guts, uh, the test of will, because that body breakdown of upper body hit, upper body hit, upper body hit yeah, yeah. over time really, really seems to be a breaker. Uh, and I know with the Sharks that they have, they again, they're one of, because they're one of the three million Shark teams in rugby, you know, they yeah. <laughs> tend to have the same kind of MO. We are good. We're bad until we're good. <laughs> kind yeah. Of yeah, yeah. So they just... Uh, they have some very good players in their team, but particularly Nico Hine, who's one of the best in the competition that they're playing. I think he was playing halfback. Um, you just, you do wear teams down. You do wear teams down. It is a brutal game. It's also a fast game. 
And so it becomes like you saw the, the Roosters game was quite different. It, go back to Vegas. You saw the Roosters. They won the war of attrition in that game. Right. So the Bronx were in there. They were in there. It was only in the last 15 minutes that the Roosters finally pulled away. But you could, you could see what was happening. Right. You could see that you could see that they were winning the battle in the trench. The Roosters were building the, the battle in the trenches, and they just arm wrestled that game away from the Broncos. Um, just, just the Broncos got more and more frustrated. The defense just get turning up, right. and that's where they won. The Sharks just with their game and the Warriors, they just wrestled their way back into it, and they just they just kept the Warriors out. They kept them frustrated. They kept them frustrated. And then they found just found ways of scoring, but they weren't great tries. But they just found ways of scoring Efficiency. points. Yeah, just consistency, consistency, consistency. It's the what is it? The water drop rule. Uh, a drop of water yeah. can create a whole cavern, a whole cave, uh, if given time yeah. or something to that effect. Yeah. You know, you saw, you saw the, the if you saw the seagulls, uh, the seagulls rabbitos game, that was a different story where it looked like the rabbitos had it. Just over half time, they scored one of their, their kind of their classic tries. They they tend to find. They tend to go to their right. I think it's their right hand side and score tries. They 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 strip the wings and they score down that side. And it looked like this was to be a classic Rabbitohs win. And all of a sudden, Manly just came in and just just inundated with three or four tries in about twenty minutes, and just caught them completely out. Um, they have they happen sometimes, but teams that that tend to do the best in the NRL are the teams that well I, are the teams that can grind it out, grind it out, and wear their opposition down. The Raiders also did that against Knights because that was another big upset. The Raiders, uh, they're almost the classic get down and get dirty side. Now, I'm sure in the NFL, you know that one side that knows how to get down and dirty. Um, it's a bully Yeah. And they, Raiders are that team. They don't have big stars in the Raiders. Raiders is – so the Raiders is the Canberra Raiders, which is the capital of Australia. It's the, one of the coldest parts of Australia. And the, because it's where our politicians live, it's the boringest part of Australia. <laughs> so people don't want to play for the Raiders, right? People don't want to play for the Raiders because everything's closed at 8 o'clock at night. God, dog. Um, it's Utah. It's yeah, no one, Australia. <laughs> and no one wants to go there. They can't, they can't keep players. They lost their, their, one of their best players, Jack Whiten, who went for lesser money. To play for the Rabbitohs because he was bored. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. He never said he was bored, but but what happens is Ricky Stewart down there. He's a, he's a, he's one of these old school coaches. He's been there for about oh gosh, he's been there forever now, eight or seven years. Mm-hmm. And he just what he does is he pulls all the people who are used to boring and and uh, cold, which is English people, and he pulls players across from England and like Elliot Whitehead and, and the new guy called Smithy, and they just play a really dogged, tough team game. And they pulled up a big win against the Knights who are far bigger stars, you know, Ponga and the like, and they beat them. If you can get down there and get into the dirty and you can win your fair share of games. Um, of course, you need, I think you need a bit more of that in there. But we saw a lot of that. I mean, I didn't see the Storm Panthers game, thank goodness. That looks, I don't know if it was boring. It looks boring. <laughs> but um, the Storm, no. Okay, this is my theory about rugby league, but also about yeah. rugby you can win in the teams that tend to win know how to win in different ways. If for whatever reason a game opens up and there's tries to be scored, your mm-hmm. team knows how to play that game, right? So if the opposition uh, gets a couple of intercept tries, even though they might not be a great team, if they can pull off two, two or three quick tries, you're down 18 nil, you still have the firepower to come back and win because you know how to score. Right. If a game is, if you're playing against a team like, the Raiders or whoever, and they and they're getting down and dirty and gritty. Well, you can win that game too. To me, that's the side of that's the sign of any good side in almost any sport. You can win in different ways. The great teams can play ugly in the wet and the mud and win three nil. Right. Or they can, if there's a try feast, whatever. The refereeing is different. It's a hard track. Whatever reason, there's tons of tra- they can win that game as well. I don't know how you, what you think about that, but I know I think that makes sense. And honestly, though, but that that should be especially again whenever you're working within a five down setup, you have to be able to get creative because of course you have to make up the most amount of space in the shortest amount of time. So if you're running a conventional one two one two one two, uh, you're going to waste your time and you're just really killing out your energy with the hopes yeah. of being able to break over time. But obviously, if you're able to find ways to be able to bully that ball a little bit more uh, yeah. and really be able to push 
uh, I, I guess that that attack for territory, especially uh, that's whenever you're really going to be able to see the most uh, difference. But again, varies from team to team. Some teams are better finesse. Yeah. Some teams are better within the defense. So with that in mind, let's kind of look forward into week two of 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 NRL. Um, so you know, I think obviously. Let's break down uh break down the game. We got Broncos, Rapidos, Sharks, Bulldogs, Panthers, Eels, Raiders, West Tigers, Cowboys, Knights, Storm, Warriors, Seagulls, Roosters, Dolphins, Dragons. Let's start with your first team uh that lost versus the other team that also lost in both the Rapidos and Broncos. This is gonna be a home game for the Broncos, obviously coming back from Vegas. Both of them are coming back in. Let me tell me your thoughts with the Broncos at home against now an also very angry Rabbitohs team that played a very high scoring game against the uh, Sea Eagles. I think without being unbiased, Broncos by 100 points. Um, <laughs> Absolutely not subjective. No, no feelings inside of that. No, no, just playing it straight on that one, man. Straight down the line. No, no, no. Um, the Broncos are playing at home. Both teams will come up five. Um, I have to admit, I was the Rabbitohs loss was probably, you know, was more of a shock than the Broncos. The Roosters are a genuinely good side. Um, so so is the Seagulls, but the Rabbitohs, the, I thought they had that game in the bag, and the way they got blown away was quite shocking. Um, they are full of really good players, and and they sh they should be contenders at the end of this year. But for whatever reason, they've started this slump about mid last year, and they and it doesn't look like they've shaken their way out of it. The Broncos, we're going to see whether they're they're going to suffer from their off-season losses. They lost a couple of really good players. I was about to ask, like, who are the players that the Broncos lost from that championship losing uh, that second place team? Uh, well, we lost Flegler, who's one of our big boys, and the Fords is where we lost that game. Okay. And Flegler lose usually comes in and, and does that hard man stuff with Haas up front, and then Carrigan gets in there as well. Um, we lost Kate. So we lost we lost Flegler and um, uh, Flegler and Herbie Farnworth. He's a great centre. We lost them to to the Dolphins, and then we lost Luke Capewell, which really shocked me. He's a real seasoned campaigner and a really solid performer. And he was good for the Warriors last week as well. We lost three players in key positions. Now every team does right. Mm -hmm. Every team loses players it's just it's we have a salary Major, cap and you just, the agency and whatnot yeah and and you Penrith have lost tons more players I think than we have but you know how do you how do you respond to that how do you rearrange your team it didn't look like Kevin Walters did a good job of getting the team together last week it's particularly after um we lost Pia Cura and one of our players got a HIA knock and he was out for the game he didn't rearrange that team very well um so if the Broncos get back into their winning groove, they should win at home. Okay. Um, but we've still got to see what this this 2024 Broncos look like with the change they made and how and how Kevy deals with those changes. Rabbitohs, of course, will be up there with a chance. Latrell Mitchell, you know, Cook, Walker, um, you know, Cameron Murray. You know, they'll compete every. They could potentially win every game they play the season. They just need to yeah. put it together as well. I don't know what's why they're slumped, but they are, have slumped. Okay, so all right, let's look at another game uh, with the other side: Seagulls versus Roosters. It's funny that they have both those teams from Vegas basically playing their opposite side. This feels like yeah. the consolation prize. Versus, yeah, uh, that's true. Round. You know, no, I, no idea what it's, it's. We don't have a form guide. <laughs> Second weekend, I have no idea what's going to happen with that Rooster Seagulls game. Both played very well. I think they shocked. Both teams are in a very similar situation, and when they've had, particularly the Roosters, but definitely also the Seagulls where they've got really, really good players. The Roosters probably have a stronger squad than the Seagulls. Um, but they haven't got all their players on the field, fit and in form at the same time. Mm -hmm. So there's always been a couple of players out, a couple of players out here, a couple of players out of form, these guys over. What I would say about why they won their first round games in Vegas was both their teams had their players on the field, in form and fit. Um, and so now they're going to now they're going to Brookie Brookvale over uh, Seagulls home ground, which is a again what we would call a, um, a bit of a fortress for them. It's not a ground that most teams like to travel to. Okay. Um, and but the Roosters, you know, they'll they'll turn up and they're they were very professional. I've gone back to their professional best. If nothing else, the Roosters have always been a very professional outfit. 
along with the Storm. So I suspect Roosters. But who do you, who do you, who are the play who are uh who are two players that we should be looking out for in that game that can be game breakers for either teams winning? Really, particularly as you've uh you, you you believe the Roosters have the biggest chance of being able to win. Who do you mm. think has the biggest game change for the Roosters uh, in this situation? What impressed me about Roosters they played as a, a unit against the Broncos. They, they were, um Tedesco, of course, at the back. Um People keep writing off Ted Desco. He's probably the second best fullback I've ever seen play the game. People, for whatever reason, particularly in New South Wales, like to write him off. He showed his class. Um, he, If he's on fire, then that's a huge boost for the Roosters coming from the back there. Um, and I guess you have to look at um, Keary. Luke Keary's good. For whatever, I like Victor Radley. He's he's a he's a, one of these get-down-and-dirty players. I noticed he had a very good game the other day, and if he plays well, Roosters play well. So there's three players for you, Kiri, Radley, and Tedesco. Tedesco is kind of the heartbeat of that Roosters side. For the Eagles, it's that's an easy one. It's Tommy Turbo at the back, Travojevic. Um, again, the fullback versus fullback. Tommy, Tommy's just a freak on his day. He had a season from heaven about three years ago where he was untouchable, like virtually untouchable. Then plagued by injuries. And, of course, DCE, Daily Cherry Evans, um, a seasoned campaign now, a winner, a great player. Um, they're the players from both those sides. Nice. Can you give me one game that you feel is going to be the surprise game of the week? Ooh, Outside of, that, obviously, Broncos, Rabbitohs, and Seahawks. Uh, they're all surprises again. There were so many upsets that first round. I just, we just, you just, uh, there's no form guide. There's no consistent form guide as yet. Yo, give um, me the one that you give me the one that you will prioritize watching because you yeah. have uh, uh, the most expectations of entertainment. Well, okay, the one that is on Friday night. The one that's the second. The ones on Friday night are usually really big. They're the ones that the television people and the NRL decide is going to be the big game. And it is the Western Derby between the Penrith Panthers versus the Parramatta Eels. It's called Parramatta Eels. If you if you if you want to remember remember it doesn't matter Eels. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter Eels. Um but uh but that's a Western Derby. So that that will be a tough that'll that's always a tough those teams fire up. You know those classic, you know, derbies right. between two two teams that are geographically close to each other. That will be a really interesting one. The Eels thumped the Eels what, uh, thumped the doggies what, last week, and, yeah. it, and the Panthers lost. So, Panthers would usually go in. I think they'll. I think they'll be short price favourites. But the Eels turn up against the Panthers for the last couple of seasons. They've turned up against the Panthers even at home. They've um they've they've given them a couple of beatings. So that's the game that is will have all the all the eyes on it. I, last year the Eels weren't really that great, and I feel like maybe the last couple of years they've been kind of floundering. What seems like different this year that they seem to be more competitive? What happened during the off season? Um, they've just, they've just, they do have a good squad. Mm -hmm. They've got players like Mitchell Mothers and Gutherson and Co. who are good players. Last year, um, last year they just, they just, they went hot and cold. The last two years they've just been running hot and cold, mm -hmm. and. Um, when they, when particularly when Mitchell Mer Moses turns up to play, and Dylan, um, the uh, the number six, the, he when he turns up to play, they they've got every chance to win. They've got some great forwards, Campbell Gillard and all them. Um, so they can run hot and cold. That's just that's how they've been. That's the form guide from them. Remember, they made it to the grand final two years ago, and they got thumped by Penrith. Um, the kind of th the the kind of thing that Eels don't forget. Eels fans don't forget. They are one of the biggest supporting clubs in Sydney. Um, they, are, they, they play under a lot of pressure um, for that reason. The Parramatta District, that's a district in, in Western Sydney, um, has a lot of people living in there. So they play under a fair bit of pressure um, and they run hot and cold. But they've got off to a good start. They, they, they thumped Bryce Cartwright, got a huge amount of points for, for the fantasy. <laughs> um and uh, if they if they play like they did last week, they got every chance of being uh, of being Penrith. Whatever you say about the Eels, week in week out form, they get up for the Panthers. Yep. Awesome, awesome. 
Jason, man, I want to thank you so much for, man, breaking it down for us. Thank you for the information. I mean, look, even if you don't know what the name of your company is on every given day basis, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the expertise on, what, on this with the NRL and uh, Super Rugby, and I expect to be able to do this again uh, for <laughs> the weeks to come as we get through the season, which is a lot of season, a lot of season. It's a great – it's a massive season, and that's why – it's early days for both competitions, particularly for the NRL. Go the Broncos. Go the Bronx. Go the Reds. Go the Reds. Yo, you guys can absolutely check out Jason. He just dropped a great Bangkok uh, Sevens tournament, uh, Bangkok Tens tournament video. I talked about it last week. You guys can check it on his channel, Jason Bray on YouTube, or uh, Jason Bray Films, if you want to be specific, or uh, Jason Bray on Instagram as well. He actually started using Instagram again, like a uh, modern person. You know, he's, he's not the most... <laughs> You, you young people with your little gidgets and gadgets and grams and TikToks. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Jason, man. And, uh, oh, no worries, uh, mate. Look forward to having you. All right. I don't want to hold you guys off. I know it's another ad. Watch out now. But I need to tell you guys about Rugby Outlet Mall. Look, this is the, the official e-commerce store for Rugby Swag Show and for Gift Time Rugby Network. And of course, we want to make sure that we are hooking you up with gear that is absolutely built for you to be able to wear on a day-to-day. -day. Of course, we can do jerseys and everybody has a jersey, but not everybody wears a jersey every day, but we have the rugby gear for you. Whether it is our FedEx best or our Play PayPal best, we have unique designs that are going to be fun and desirable for you to represent the way that you need to. And of course, if you guys go to RugbyOutletMall.com and you Use the code Grow Rugby. We're gonna save you ten percent off your first order. Hey, please support Rugby Swag Show, uh, and of course, even some of our other stuff, the HBC Rugby Classic, and just general, general uh, gear and and merch for you guys. Because hey, I want you guys to have the best, and I definitely appreciate you guys supporting. So definitely go RugbyOutletMall.com. Use promo code Grow Rugby, G R E A U X Rugby, and you will get ten percent off your first order. Thank you so much i appreciate you guys and let me let you get back let me let you get back cheers